the God of your salvation. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. That word inhabits means he lives in the praises of his people. So lift up your voices, clap your hands, give God what he deserves. If he has been good to you, if he has opened up doors, if he has made a way, if he has seen you from danger seen and unseen, if he's healed your body, if he's been any kind of good, I tell you to make a sound. This is our call to worship. Lift up your hearts in prayer. Lift up your voices in praise. Let your eyes rise in expectation, your hands in exultation. For the Lord has drawn near and dwells among us. We want to thank you all on Facebook Live, on YouTube for joining us. We are located here in Gary, Indiana, 3140 West 21st Avenue, where our wonderful pastor is Pastor Edward C. Turner. We thank you for joining us here in the house. Let's give God another shout of praise in this building. Let's let him know that we want him here. Let's let him know that we welcome him here. Give him an invitation. Your praise is your verbal invitation. Your praise is what invites him in. And when God enters into the room, the atmosphere shifts. When God comes into the room, the atmosphere shifts. It is your praise that causes him to come into the room. So I dare you to invite him in. Hallelujah. We will have pray, um, scripture and prayer from our layman ministry and deacons. And, and praise and worship. Praise, um, praise and worship will follow thereafter. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I read to you the entire 100 Psalms, and the word of the Lord is already blessed. You may be seated. Amen. Church, say amen. 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 It's prayer time. Whose father? Our father. Whose father? Our father. Our father. Bow your head and let's pray. Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, give us this day and our daily bread. Lord, forgive us and our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against yes, us. Lord. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, this is the day that you have made. Yes, Lord. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Heavenly Father, I come giving you all honor, glory, and thanks on this morning, dear Lord, yes, Lord. and praise because you are so worthy, dear yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning, thank dear you, Lord. Thank you. We want to thank you for having this church to come and praise you with this morning, dear Lord. Dear Father, we thank you for every member here, to everybody that's serving your, under my name, under your name, uh, in Jesus' name, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we ask that you bless this worship service please, this morning. Lord, please, Lord. Now, Father, I need you to anoint this prayer, dear yes, Father, on the day. Father God, we thank you so much for being our God, dear Lord. Father, we thank you. That we can't thank you much. If I had 10,000 tongues, I thank you with every one of them, yes, dear Father. Lord. We thank you for the pastor that's coming to bring your word, dear thank Father. You. Father, we thank you for the children of this church, dear yes, Father. We thank you for 
shining your light on, Father. We thank you for the rain this morning, Father. We need the rain, dear Lord. Dear Lord, when we anoint this prayer, we ask that you tell that Satan to take his hands off our members that's sick today, Father. We ask that you continue to heal like you only you can do, Father. Father, we just thank you. We love you. We're grateful for you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, we just ask that you just continue to, to be with us as we go forth this week, Father. Father God, we know we need your help. We're standing in the need of prayer this morning, Father. We can't do nothing without you, Father. We ask that you continue to bless us, Father, because we know if you bless us, we'll be blessed, Father. Father, if you keep us, we'll be kept, Father. Oh, and we just, just want to tell you that we just love you so much, Father, and we need you. And we ask in Jesus' name that you continue to continue to be our God. In Jesus' name, we pray this prayer. Amen. Church, say amen. 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 Good morning. I know it's only a few here today, but last Sunday, the glory of God was all over this place. The power of God moved in the church. If you don't know it, it's men's Sunday and the men in charge. But we're going to, we just going to have a little praise and worship. I hope you left home with a praise in your heart. A hallelujah. A thank you, Jesus. It's an individual journey. I know you might be a little tired. I worked last night till three in the morning, but I'm ready to give God a praise. And I'm going to say it and be through. This week I visited with three men that were paralyzed. The next morning I told Geraldine, I said, we should never complain. She said, why? I saw they still want to live. One can't even give herself a glass of water until somebody gets. And if that ain't enough for you to get a praise and thank God that he allowed you to come to church one more time. I know some of us are seniors. I got a birthday next week. But I, uh, y'all figure out whole. So I'm asking you to stand on your feet and let's go and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God here in the name of Jesus. Let's go.
God is a good God. It's prayer time at the New Revelation Church. It, back in the day, we all come to the altar. But if you got a problem, just think it or speak it. If it's something in the body, just touch that part of the body. I believe Jesus is a healer. You better leave me alone. As Deacon Daryl McGee comes and takes us to the throne of grace. You pray and he'll pray. If you pray hard enough, there's going to be some shown up preaching in the pulpit. Hallelujah unto God. Pray for us, brother. Let us bow our heads and let us lift up our hearts and our minds to our Lord and Savior. Thanking Him for this opportunity once again to be in the house, to be in the house of the Lord, to be able to worship amongst each other. This is a time we want to always don't take for granted, but to just show the goodness of what He's done for us all. So when you bow your heads, think of His Son. And think of others. Is there someone that is in need of prayer? Someone we know. So open our minds and our hearts as we bow our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for once again allowing us, Lord, to be able to assemble ourselves together we thank you lord in the name of jesus christ as our lord and savior how sweet the name of jesus heavenly father father god we just want to thank you for being here lord we thank you for allowing us to make it here safely to be able lord to just be amongst each other to be able to be in a situation, Lord, that we know we didn't do it on our own. But Lord, as I look around, you blessed someone. You blessed us all, Lord. But there was someone that wasn't here last Sunday that's here this Sunday, Heavenly Father. Father God, you are truly gracious, Lord. Father God, let us pray for those that are sick and shut in, Lord. Father God, there's many there in a hospital that's in need of prayer. There's many in a nursing home that is in need of prayer. Many that are prison bound, Heavenly Father. Father God, I just pray, Lord, even on the workforce, Lord, even in the world, that we need prayer. That we need to fellowship with one another. Love ye one another, Heavenly Father, as Christ loved us. Yet we should love ye one another, Lord. Father God, Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your word, Lord, how it enlightens our life, Heavenly Father, how it brings us that joy, Heavenly Father. Through your word, salvation is healed, Lord. Through your word, Lord, all things is possible, Lord. Through your word, Heavenly Father, that if we just lean, trust, and depend on it, Lord, everything is right in it, Heavenly Father. Father God, please touch in a special way. There's someone with a heavy heart right now, Lord. Touch the Heavenly Father. Father God, I just pray that as we pray, that our prayers are not just consistent on our own selfish needs at times, Lord, but the need of someone else that is in need of prayer, Lord, and not just be hearers of your word, Lord, but doers of your word. For well, you said in your words, the harvest is plentiful, yet the labors are few, Lord. There is work to be done in the vineyard, Heavenly Father. Father, I just pray that we just take this and just do our part, Heavenly Father. Do our part, Heavenly Father. That it make this world a better place, Lord. Father, there's so much killing, so much crime, Lord. Overseas in Ukraine, Lord, and even in our own communities, Heavenly Father, there's work to be done. But let's just pray that we don't just hold on to your gift that you've given us, 
but we will use your gift that you gave us to be a blessing to others, Lord, for you are blessed us, Heavenly Father, to truly be a blessing to others. Please, Lord, allow us to remember your goodness, Heavenly Father, and just pray, Lord, that as our pastor come forth with the word, Lord, that we would not just be hearers of the word, Lord, that we would be doers of your holy word, Lord. Bless him, Heavenly Father. Bless us all, Lord, that we would just let your light so shine that men would see your good works, Lord, and glorify the Father, which is in heaven. And Lord, we know that as we get to the end of this journey, I just pray that every day be a day of celebration, Lord, because Father, this just may be our last time assembled together this day, Lord. So let us all just rejoice this Sunday morning, Lord. Let us all just put aside whatever's burdening us, Heavenly Father, because I know it's things that's burdening us, Heavenly Father. But Lord, Jesus took it all to the cross that we can just believe and trust and just spend this time lifting his name, Lord. Did there come a day, Lord, when this all will be over, Father? That the former things will be passed away. The things we know now, we will know no more. But you is making all things new, Heavenly Father, for us, Heavenly Father. For there will be no more sorrow, Lord, no more pain, no more suffering, Heavenly Father. For we will go from mortal to immortality. Sin will have no control of us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the things that we know, things that we do, Lord, we will be held accountable for it. So I just pray, Lord, that we will remember Jesus always, even to the end. When you said, Lord, you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that we will love others as Christ loved us. In Jesus Christ's name, our Lord and Savior, thank you again, Father. Amen. Thank you, brother, for that great prayer. If it didn't touch their hearts, it touched mine. Now we're going further in the service. Let's give God a praise because I believe God yet answers prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to our God here. Glory to our God. Come on now. Thank you. 
Put your hands together. If you know Jesus, for yourself. Amen. Thank God for these men. Thank God for them as men. Give these men a hand. Every fourth Sunday, we praise God for their willingness to want to continue to worship God the way they do it. Amen. They are a blessing to our church. I know some preachers, pastors, churches have done away with the aggregation such as the men's ministry and different things like that. But I'm proud to be able to say that our men are very vibrant. Amen. And they are willing to want to share in song. Stand up here. I'm telling you, some of the things such as that are being obsolete in some churches. They say that's boring and old fogey, but I'm just glad that we have space, not just for youth, but for the men, amen, that continue to want to sing and share in the praise and the worship of God. We have a multifaceted church, ages, and we hit all age ranges, amen. 
And so we thank God for those of you who showed up here on today. Give yourself a hand. Have you spoke to the one sitting next to you, around you? Look around and tell somebody, hi, how you doing? Look around. Amen. We're in fellowship on today. Amen. It's just good to see you all sharing. Thank God for your presence here on today. Some people heard that it was going to rain all day, and they said, we'll take an off day. Amen. But if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time, just one more time. Amen. If you're just glad to be in the house one more time, because this may be my last time, and I'm just glad to be in the house one more time. Amen. 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 So grateful to be back. Good to see our good friend in the back, Reverend Isaiah Grant. Amen. Good to see you. Come on up if you want. Amen. Amen. Come on up, Reverend Isaiah. I've been knowing him for a long time and sharing with us. So good to see you sharing with us on today. As we are here again at the this Sunday, the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, amen, I was vacillating even at the convention, amen, even at the convention, you know, it was weak filled with things to do, amen. I knew I had to still come and share a word, and as I was meditating, driving during that time, I said, Lord, what do you want your people to hear? What do you want me to say? How do you want to use me as a vessel instrument to these people that you have placed in my care? And not only as for to them, but for me as well. We shared in Bible study on this morning, Sunday Bible Institute, that we're all students, disciples of the word. We never stop growing and learning. And so as I was pondering, Sister Mac, on what to share, the Lord led me to do things a little different today. I don't necessarily have a foundational scripture, but we're going to scroll through several scriptures. Because I thought about what happened after resurrection. Sometimes we get to today, we get to the hype of the resurrection, but I wonder how many of us really understand the impact of the resurrection and what happened after Jesus rose. We hear it Sunday after Sunday that he went to a tomb, which is very vital. But what does that mean? What happened after the resurrection? The Lord put on my heart to talk from this idea, the aftershock, the aftershock. Those who know anything about California, you understand what I mean. Those people who experience earthquakes, sometimes there's an aftershock. I understand it in the term that we are familiar with. But I thought about it, Sister Marcy, in the term, the aftershock, the after amazement. Because I viewed it, Sherry, from this idea, aftershock can always also be looked at as the after effect of a distressing or traumatic event in your life. Or in life. Uh, The after effect. Y'all roll with me. The after effect. Of some traumatic or distressing event. This was a traumatic and distressing event. The crucifixion was traumatic for some. Because his believers saw a man. Beaten. Bloody bruised and crucified. The one they saw do miraculous things. But they went to the tomb and he wasn't there. It's a traumatic and distressing event. I wish somebody understand. 
but maybe I can come a little closer to your life. What was the after effect of some distressing or traumatic event in your life? What was your disposition? What was your mindset? And I believe today that there are some people now, you're still suffering from some news you got years ago. The after effect, something that changed and turned your life around. But I started thinking about this idea of the aftershock of Jesus. Jesus stayed here 40 days after his resurrection. He was seen by over 500 witnesses. This is the after effect. And I'm going to just pull a few scriptures to help you to understand or to invite you in this understanding of the aftershock. The first scripture I want to share with you is going to be on the screen is Luke 24th chapter verses 22 and 23 and you can read the whole narrative when you get home. I just want to pull out a pericope of this passage. Then I'm going to look at verse 31 and 32 but Look at what it says right there from the NIV version of the Bible. It said, in addition, some of our women amazed us. That's shock, y'all. <laughs> because they went to the tomb early this morning, but they did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Amen, somebody. Now, look at verse 31 and 32. Did you have that? It said, then these men, their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. These two men, go home and read it. You'll see they were walking down the road of Emmaus. They were talking about the events that happened on, on that day. I told you it was a distressing event. I told you it was an event that caused people's eyes to be open. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, it was an earthquake. Because the event of Jesus raising from the dead quaked the earth. Because no one had ever died, Tony, and risen from the dead. But it was only a testament, a testimony of what Nicodemus said in the third chapter. When he confronted Jesus at night, he said, no one, we know you're from God. Because no one else can do the things that you are doing. And isn't it good to know that you serve a God, that you have a Savior that can do what no other power can do? Bible says that they were walking, they were talking about the events of that day. And this man appeared walking. They act like they thought he didn't know what was happening. But he said, don't you know the scripture is fulfilled? And isn't it good to know that we serve a God that does not lie? Amen, somebody, that whatever he says in his word, it shall, it will come to pass. But as they were talking and Jesus opened up the scriptures to them, watch this. They said in verse 32, were not our hearts burning within us, preach turner, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. I'm talking about the aftershock and I'm talking about his presence. His presence and the aftershock is always penetrating. Somebody missing what I'm saying. They said, did not our hearts burn within us as he opened the scripture? And is there anybody ever got to a place where somebody began to speak a word in your life and they opened up the scriptures to you and you felt it all in your soul. You felt it all in your heart when you know that you have Christ's presence in your life is penetrating. 
Somebody say penetrating. Somebody feel it right now. That's why I want to hear a word from a bona fide anointed preacher because the anointing, you feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. I ain't talking about people just up there hollering. I ain't talking about people that's up there just doing an act. But is there something that flows from the mouth, the heart of the preacher, and the people in the pew can feel it? It's penetrating. It's aftershock. It's penetrating. Amen, somebody. Not only is it penetrating, the next scripture I want to show you. Y'all stay with me. Amen. John, the 20th chapter, verse 19 through 25. It says it like this on the evening of the first day of the week. When the disciples were together, when the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. And is there anybody in the house know that there were some traumatic and distressing things that happen in your life that cause fear to be in your life. I wish I had some people in the house that understand fear is real. Amen. Sometimes I've been in some spots. I've been in some tight spots where there was fear. I didn't know how I was going to make it. I don't know what I was going to do, but I'm so glad the Bible says that Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Amen. Somebody, he said, peace be with you. And after this, he showed them his hand and his side. And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. I feel like preaching. Amen. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Amen. Somebody. And with this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, then their sins are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, then they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12 was not with the disciples. When Jesus came. So the other disciples told him. We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them. Unless I see the nail marks. In his hand. And put my finger in the nails. And put my hand in his side. I will not believe. Y'all go home and read the rest. I'm just trying to give y'all a little appetizer. But the Bible says right there, not only is his presence and the aftershock is penetrating, but his presence is also peaceful. Somebody missing what I'm saying. Is there anybody that ever been in a place of fear and somebody gave you a word from the Lord and it gave you a sense of peace? And anybody know that in his presence, there is peace. Amen, somebody. Jesus will give you the peace. See, peace does not come from what is happening. That's happiness. Amen. But I have peace that comes from a relationship with him. And that means every now and then the Lord shows up in my life. And when I have a penetrating word, then I have a peaceful word. I wish somebody understood. He said, peace I give you. Peace be with you. And if you're not careful, some of us will be like Thomas. Amen. Thomas said, if I don't see it for myself, I will not believe it. Amen. And it's all right because if you keep on reading, Jesus showed back at church again. See, Thomas missed church the first time. And see, that's why you got to be careful not to go to the worship gathering, to show up at the believers gathering because you might miss your revelation. And if you miss the revelation, then you won't experience manifestation. Somebody missing what I'm saying. But revelation, you have to have a revelation, a word in order to experience manifestation. Manifestation is seeing what the word has said. I miss somebody understood in the house. And do I have anybody in the house that know that because the word is penetrating and because the word is peaceful, because I receive a revelation. Y'all don't want to talk to me, but come here, King, that asked Jeremiah, is there a word from the Lord? I need a bona fide word from the Lord because the king was distressed and he needed some peace in his life. And is there anybody in the house know that he will keep you in 
perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. He said, my peace I leave with you. And I know everybody can't get excited, Reverend Grant, because they don't understand the peace of God. That's why that old song was written years ago. When peace like a river attended my way. When sorrow like sea billows rose. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Even when I don't see well. Even when I don't feel well. It's always well with my soul because I got the peace of God. His peace. As Paul puts it, passes all understanding. And when you got his peace, watch this. It'll guard your heart and your mind. I don't know how we do it. I don't understand it, but I know it's true. Because there were times when everything around me was in disarray, was discombobulated. But I'm glad I held myself together. I could still trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not into my own understanding. But in all my ways, I still acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. It's penetrating. It's peaceful. Now turn to Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them for, watch this, different gospel writers. Three different experiences. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and in earth has been given to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All he's doing, Sister Mitchell, is restoring unto them the authority that they had in the beginning. Because you remember when he created everything, he said, man shall have dominion. Preach Turner. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for dropping it like it's hot. Amen. He said, I'm going to give you the authority that you should have had in the beginning because when I made man, I gave you dominion over everything because you had my spirit. He says, so now after I breathe on them and they receive, watch this, the Holy Ghost, the same way I Breathe on you when you were laying there dormant. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lifeless. You didn't have life until I breathed in man's nostrils and gave him my breath. Then he became a living soul. And what Jesus is saying right here, since I breathed on you and now I've given you the authority, the dominion that you lost. Now you have my spirit. Priest Turner. He said, I'm giving you the Holy Ghost. He said, now you can go as my representative. You have diplomatic immunity. You can walk where you want to walk. He said, go and make disciples to all nations. That Baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. You have the authority. You have the power to baptize them. Amen. That means go under priest turn. Look at verse number 20. Y'all keep on rolling. It said, now watch this. In verse number 20, it says, and teaching them to obey everything uh, I have commanded you uh, and surely I am with you always uh, even to the end of the age uh, I have given you more power uh, I've given you my spirit uh, and is there anybody in the house uh, that ever lost something uh, but you're glad that you restored unto you y'all don't want to talk to me come here David a little while uh, David had messed up uh, and slept with Bathsheba uh, but thank God for a word huh, from the prophet Nathan huh, that told him, David, huh, that you didn't mess over this man's wife. Huh, you didn't kill the man. Huh. He said, David said, oh, my gosh. Huh, oh, Lord, have mercy on me. Huh, according to thy loving kindness. Huh, I told you a bona fide word huh, is penetrating. Huh. David heard a word huh, from the prophet Nathan. Huh, and David said, have mercy unto me, oh, Lord. Huh. Then he goes down a few verses. He said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And is there anybody that ever lost anything? You ever lost your peace? You almost lost your mind. Some of you lost your mind. But you got to tell.
testimony that it was restored. And so now, watch this, I can go tell somebody. That's why Revelation says, and we'll know that they are overcomers by the word of their testimony. All because I got my power back. I got my mind back. I got my rights back. Then I can tell somebody everything that the Lord has said. He's given me purpose. All because I got peace. All because I received a penetrating word. And is there anybody in the house? I know everybody came die with me. But at least 20 people in the house that say, I know I got a testimony. I know I've been born again. I know I've been redeemed. I've been bought with a price. And I did say I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I just couldn't keep it to myself. I had to tell somebody. I once was lost in sin. But Jesus took me in. Then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It filled my soul with love. Say yes. Have a little talk with Jesus. He'll make it all right. I got purpose. And the last thing I reason, I got purpose. Acts 1 6, verse 3 6 3 11. It said, Then they gathered around him. And the Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? See, they were thinking about the wrong thing. Some of you want God to restore your money. Some of you want God to restore your marriage. You want restoration in the wrong area of your life. But is there anybody glad that God will restore your spirit? God will bring you back. Jesus said it's not for you to know the time nor the date that the Father is set by his own authority. Verse number 8 says it just like this but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem that's at home in Judea that's in the city in Samaria that's in the state and the utmost parts of the world that's everywhere else you go and I'm so glad that after he said this he was taken up before their very eyes on a cloud hid him from their sight preacher Turner and the Bible says they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going up when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them and the two men said men of Galilee why do you stand here looking in the sky the same Jesus the same Jesus oh the same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back the same way ain't he all right i got power anybody know you got power that's why i act the way i act i got power to leap over the truth i got power to make it through the night i got power to be a witness for the lord that's the aftershock and because there was an aftershock over 2,000 years ago. Guess what, y'all? I still feel it today. Is there anybody know that you still feel the aftershock? And I'm so glad that when these days time will be no more. I'm not going to stand here looking for Jesus. But since I got power, I'm going to work while it is day. Because one of these days, there's night coming. Time will be no more the same way you left. He's coming back. Anybody ready for him to come back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to see Jesus, the man that died for me. I want to see Jesus, the man that set me free. Ain't he all right? Yeah. I got joy in my heart. 
right. Excuse me, y'all. I don't mean to act like this, but this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. It's the aftershock. It gets down in my heart. It gets down in my soul. It gets down in my feet. Before I know it, my hand is waving. Ain't he all right? Yeah. <laughs> Look at your name. Say the aftershock. The aftershock. They not getting excited. Look at somebody else. It said there's something about the aftershock. Yeah. Thank you, God. For the aftershock. Thank you for penetrating. Thank you for peace. Thank you for purpose. Thank you for power. Somebody glad you got power. I'm through now, but guess what? You should have been dead. You shouldn't be here today. But thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. Power. To make you walk right. Power to make you live right. Power to make you love right. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Thank you. I don't deserve it, but thank you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hallelujah. The aftershock. Mm. Anybody know you got to tell somebody about the man named Jesus? He's been good. If he's been good, I got to tell somebody. I want other people to know that this feeling that I feel, could nobody do it for me but Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. The aftershock. We got to know what happened after the resurrection. There was reverberating. Amen. A wave. And I'm glad that wave never stopped. And guess what, y'all? All I'm doing is riding the wave. Is there anybody else that's riding the wave? Of what God did for me. I wish I was in California. I know you live there for a while. But if you go out on the ocean, you'll see the surfers trying to catch a wave. And when the Holy Ghost show up, you ought to try to catch, catch the wave so you can surf. Yeah! Ah, yeah! The Lord has called us and commissioned us not only to glory and gloat in the resurrection, but we have some work to do because I am redeemed. Because we are redeemed, bought with the price. We've been saved from the clutches of hell. And I believe in hell. I don't know if you don't. 
but I do. And I just learned how to ride the wave of what Jesus did. A wave comes up naturally. Jesus did this naturally. And so we want other people to be saved. We're not going to understand every iota, every nuance, dynamic of this Christian belief, this Christian faith. But it's about what you believe. And you put yourself in a position to learn as much as you can, while you can. That's the aftershock. Because you are the conduit as well to carry it past you. Mama gave it to me. She introduced me to it. Mama, big mama introduced it to her. Great grandmama Nancy and so on. The aftershock. Years and years later, we're experiencing the aftershock of his resurrection. And don't let it stop with you. Keep spreading. Testifying. You have power to go and to grow. Put your hands together and give her a hand clap of praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now for this word that will remind us that we have something to glory in. Even though there are times we are in a place of grief, but we move from grief to glory. And thank you for the glory that we experience, that we hear and believe as you got up on that third day. You weren't there. Thank you. But thank you for your presence. Even after the resurrection. You were seen by over 500 witnesses. Your presence was felt. Just these few scriptures that we highlighted today. Because of your presence, there was a penetrating force. Peaceful gave us purpose. And we have power. Bless those under the sound of my voice who will come to believe and experience you. Thomas called Didymus. Didymus. He was not at the gathering. But Jesus showed back up. He said, Thomas, see here is my hands. You see the print in my side. But he said to Thomas something that was important for all of us to hear. He said, Thomas, you believe me because you've seen it. But then Jesus makes another declaration. He said, blessed are those that believe, that have not seen. Thank God for we are a part of that group. We believe it even though we didn't see it. Thank you for manifesting your presence in our lives through your written word. Thank you for Jesus who is the Lagos, the living word. But thank you for a rhema word that comes through this revelation from illumination. Thank you, oh God. Help us to be witnesses. Help us to walk in our authority, our power, our position. There's somebody under the sound of my voice that has not ridden the wave yet. We pray they'll catch this wave. Because one day, the wave will be at ease. No more waves to catch. But we pray, oh God, they'll believe in this Christ. They'll believe in his life. His death, burial, his birth, death, life. His birth, life, death, burial, and resurrection. And we're waiting on your second coming again. We trust right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank God for those of you who tuned in with us on today. We pray something was said to encourage you, to motivate you, to be everything that God has called you to be. We want to remember those who are sick and convalescing. Sharice, we want you to know that we are praying for you. She has some procedures done. Deacon Dorsey, we want you to know that we are praying for you. So good to see Sister Mitchell here in worship on today. Sister Boone is here. Sister Lindsay is here. Thank God for their presence back in our presence. Pray for Sister McGee. Pray for Sister Terry. We pray for you, Rakia. Thank God for 
brother and sister Brody. We have you in our prayers and so many more. Sister Lillian Williams. We have you in our prayers. So many more that we want you to know that we have you on our mind. Thank you to all of those who do believe us, deem us to be your Facebook church. And me, your Facebook pastor, thank you for the gifts that you send. Those who give through Givelify, your virtual presence means the world to us. Pray that you'll meet us at one of our Bible studies. Tuesday this week is the only one we'll have because of the simultaneous revival that will be going on in our city. So meet us here Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. We will not have Bible study in the evening on Wednesday because of the simultaneous revival. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer. If you want to be a disciple of this church, a member of this church, contact our church at 219-949-2225 right here in the fair city of Gary, Indiana. Email us, Facebook us, write us a letter. We love you. And remember, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. God bless you. Put your hands together. Amen. Is there now, there may be. Thank you.